Good morning, third graders. My name is Eric Aguilar, and I teach third grade science at Chohawi Intermediate School. I want to give a big shout out to all the Chohawi Eagles and Team Aguilar members who are watching. Hi, guys. I miss you all. The handout that accompanies this video can be found on the KCS website under the Student Resources tab. This is Week 5 Activity Packet. Today's activity is third grade science. If you need a printed copy of this activity, they are going to be given out during the meal distribution sites on Wednesdays between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. If this video is hard to understand, you can turn on closed captions if available, adjust the playback speed to slow down the video, consider watching short clips and then pause, listen, and watch again, or you can ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. Stop frequently and talk to your partner about what you've heard and understand. Okay, let's get started with our science lesson. Today we will learn how scientists use weather tools to measure weather. So, let me ask you a question. When you hear the word meteorologist, what comes to mind? What's in your schema or your background knowledge about the word meteorologist? Maybe you think of this. You know, when you watch the news and there's a weatherman or the weather woman and they're telling you about the weather and the forecast for the next several days. Well, the weathermen on the news are meteorologists, but not all meteorologists are weathermen on the news. Actually, most meteorologists are scientists who work in laboratories or out in nature. Meteorologists analyze weather data using data collected by tools. They prepare forecasts or reports of what is likely to happen next in the weather. Later in today's lesson, we're going to learn about the weather tools that these special scientists use to measure the weather. So meteorologists tell us a lot about what we know about weather. So remember that weather is what the air is like at a certain time and a place. Living in East Tennessee, we know that the weather can change from day to day, even throughout one day. Before we begin talking about the weather tools that scientists use to measure the weather, let's review what we talked about the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, you reviewed the water cycle, and then last week, you reviewed types of clouds. It's so important that meteorologists understand the water cycle and the types of clouds. So let's review those real quickly. In the water cycle, the sun heats up water that's on the land or in the ocean. The water, which is liquid, gets turned to a gas called water vapor. And the water vapor travels up into the air and condenses, and all the water vapor comes together and collects as clouds. That part of the water cycle is called condensation. Kind of like a sponge, a cloud can only hold so much water before the water starts to come down. And when the water comes down from the clouds, that's known as precipitation. And then the cycle goes on and on and on. That's why it's called a cycle. So think back to the condensation phase of the water cycle, when the water vapor collects and forms clouds. Not all the clouds are going to be the same. Let's review the types of clouds you talked about last week. Today we're going to review the four most common kinds of clouds that you probably see. One type of cloud is my favorite type, the cumulus clouds. Cumulus clouds are fluffy and they look like cotton balls that have been put together. When you see cumulus clouds, it's probably going to be partly sunny, there's going to be a light breeze. I like to tell my students that you can think of picnic weather when you see cumulus clouds because it's going to be nice weather, it's not going to be too windy, there's not going to be rain, it's cumulus clouds tell you it's a good day for a picnic. Another type of clouds are the cirrus clouds. Those are those white, thin, wispy clouds. It looks like you got a cotton ball and stretched it out. There's going to be pleasant weather, kind of windy with cirrus clouds. I like to, I tell my class that, that is known as the kite weather because since it's going to be a little bit windy, it'd be a good day to have your kite up and fly your kite. A third kind of cloud is a stratus clouds. That's when you look up in the sky and it looks like there's a gray blanket up in the sky. And when there's stratus clouds, there's usually going to be light precipitation, so light snow, light rain. I like to call that the umbrella weather. With my dog Leo, if there's stratus clouds, he would go outside if, as long as I have an umbrella over us. But if there's cumulonimbus clouds, that's a different story. Cumulonimbus clouds are those cl tall clouds with a dark base. And when there are cumulonimbus clouds, there, there's going to be some heavy precipitation. You might have some storms going on. I like to call that the stay inside weather because my dog Leo, he would have take, taken one step outside and said, 
no thank you, I'm just going to stay inside. So those are the four types of clouds that you've talked about last week. If you look outside your window right now, I wonder what kind of clouds you might see. So remember, we said that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain how scientists use weather tools to measure the weather. Let's think about that. Measure the weather. How do you think we measure weather? Do you think we use this? Should we use a, go outside and get a ruler to measure the weather? Right. Of course not, because we learn in math class that we use a ruler to measure length. So take a moment and think to yourself, what are weather tools? When I hear the word tools, I usually think of things like this, or maybe this. That's not the kind of weather tools I'm talking about. Did you know that you can also call weather tools weather instruments? And no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about specific tools that scientists use to measure the weather. So let's learn about weather tools. Just like there are different kinds of weather, there are different kinds of weather tools that scientists use. One type of weather tool that meteorologists use is the anemometer. An anemometer measures wind speed. An anemometer has cups, special kinds of cups that are attached to it. And the faster the wind blows, the faster those special cups spin around. And that's able to measure the, spin, the speed of the wind. It's kind of like in your car, or your parents' car, or your grandparents' car, the faster that a tire spins, the bigger the number in the odometer will get. So the faster the anemometer spins, the faster the wind. Another kind of weather tool is the barometer. It's kind of a hard word to say. Can you say that barometer? A barometer measures air pressure. Meteorologists use changes in air pressure to predict the weather. One time when meteorologist Matt Hinkins came to my classroom, he said that when he's predicting the weather, or predicting the weather, he said that high air pressure meant happy weather, and low air pressure meant lousy weather. Another kind of weather tool that scientists use is called the rain gauge. Can you say that rain gauge? A rain gauge measures how much precipitation has fallen. Have you ever watched the weather on the news and they said last week it rained one inch, maybe two inches, depending, or maybe they said last week it, there were zero inches of rain. I always wondered how did they measure it? Did they just get a ruler and measure it? Not quite. What they use is a rain gauge and it can tell how many inches of rain or snow or precipitation has fallen. Another kind of weather tool is a tool that I'm sure you are familiar with, the thermometer. A thermometer measures temperature. It tells how hot or cold something is. Some thermometers look like this. It has what's called mercury inside of it. But if you've ever been sick, you probably had to get a thermometer, maybe kind of like this, and put it under your tongue to tell your body temperature. Do you know you can even get thermometers for cooking? Like here is a thermometer that I would stick in food to determine the temperature of food to know if it's been cooked enough so that I can eat it. And the last kind of weather tool we're going to talk about is the weather vane. Weather vanes can also be called a wind vane. I like, I really like wind vanes. They show the direction that the wind is blowing. And what I really like about wind vanes is a lot of times you'll see animals, like metal or plastic animals, that are attached. Like if you look at this slide, you can see there's a chicken. Not a real chicken, but a metal chicken that's attached to it. And then there will be an arrow that points to north east, south, or west, so that we know what direction the wind is blowing in. All right, let's take a moment and review the five weather tools that we have learned about today. Take a moment and review those. Do you think you know all five weather tools? You do? Well, let's see. It's time to show what you know. I'm going to ask you some questions, and then you tell me what type of weather tool you would use to measure the weather. Which weather tool do I use to measure air pressure? Take a moment and think about that. Which weather tool do I use to measure air pressure? Barometer, thermometer, anemometer, weather vane, or rain gauge? Did you say barometer? 
Awesome, great job. A barometer measures air pressure. All right, you're on a roll. Let's look at the second one. Second question. Which weather tool do I use to measure the temperature? Right, a thermometer. Good job. Ready for question three? Which weather tool is used to measure the amount of rainfall? Yeah, that one's kind of easy. A rain gauge measures the rainfall. Good job, guys. Here's another one. Which weather tool do I use to measure wind speed? That's right. It's an anemometer. Anemometers measure wind speed. Last question. Here we go. Which weather tool do I use to measure wind direction? You did it! A weather vane. A weather vane measures wind direction. You did a great job, guys. That's awesome. I'm so proud of you. Since we're talking about weather vanes, let's make one so that you can practice being a meteorologist and use a weather tool to measure the weather. All right, here's what you need to make a weather vane. You need a paper plate, but if you went to the food distribution, you know, the food was given to you with a piece of cardboard, and if you want to, you could make a circle on the cardboard and cut that out, and you'd have a really strong base for your wind vane. But you can also just use a regular paper plate, a straw, a pair of scissors, a paper clip, some scotch tape, a pencil, and a piece of construction paper, scratch paper, colored paper, the kind of paper you have doesn't really matter. We're just going to use that to make an arrowhead. So if you don't have construction paper, that's fine. And when you put all these together, you're going to be able to make a weather vane that looks kind of like this, so that you can practice being a scientist who uses a weather tool to measure the weather. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is get your plate. Maybe you're using a paper plate or you're using the cardboard that came with the food during meal distribution. What you're going to do with your plate is label it with the cardinal directions. If you're thinking, what are cardinal directions? Well, think back to social studies at the beginning of the year. We were studying maps and compass rows, and we learned that you can label a compass rows with the cardinal directions of north, east, south, and west. You can also use the abbreviations N, E, S, W when you're labeling the cardinal directions. I'm just going to put the abbreviations on my plate, but if you want to write it all out on your plate and make it more colorful, that's fine, but I'm just going to write the abbreviations for the column directions. I'm going to put it in for north, E for east, S for south, W for west. So it should look like that when you're finished. And when you're done with that, set your plate to the side. Then what you want to do is get your scratch paper, your colored paper, whatever paper you had available, and we're going to make an arrowhead to put at the end of our straw. It doesn't have to be too big. Maybe about this size. If it's a little bit bigger or smaller, that's okay, but you just want to have one end of your straw with an arrowhead so you can see which way the wind is blowing. So I'm going to get my straw, my arrowhead, I'm just going to put a little, a little piece of tape. And I'm just going to tape this to one of the ends of the straw, like that. Then what you want to do is get your paper clip, and then just go to the end on the outside and stretch it open like that. Does that make sense? So you're going to hold it like that. So what you want to do now that you have your paper clip ready is you want to get your straw and figure out right where the middle of your straw is and you're going to poke the paper clip straight through like that. You want to make sure it can spin around like that so we can make it like a weather vane. Then you're going to get your pencil and the part that you poke through the straw, you're going to part, poke into your eraser. Don't have to go all the way down. Just kind of like 
that so it sticks into it. Make sure that your paper clip doesn't get in the way and test it out. Like I need to adjust that a little bit. There we go. So that'll spin around when the wind gets to it. And then get your paper plate and you want to go figure out as close to right in the middle as you can get it. Like I'm going to poke my hole kind of like right about there. You might want to make a dot to guide you. So I'm just going to get my pencil and don't do it too fast because if you go too fast you might tear too much and you're going to just go through the paper plate and go to about there and then your weather vane is ready to go. And once again, test out, you might need to move it up and down a little bit, but make sure that your weather vane can spin and we're ready to take it outside and try it out. So I looked at my windows and I saw those stratus clouds. You see how it looks kind of like a gray blanket up in the sky? And I knew that stratus clouds mean it's gonna be kind of windy, which is perfect for using my weather vane. So I came outside with my weather vane and I used the compass app on my phone to know which direction north was. Where I live, north is over here. And if you don't have a compass or an app to show where north is, that's okay. The main thing is to know how to use a weather vane. So when I brought it outside, the arrow pointed this way, which means the wind was blowing north, but as you can see, it's just starting to move a little bit east. So that is how scientists, mainly meteorologists, use a weather vane to know which direction the wind is blowing. At the bottom of your science handout, you'll find a chart that looks like this. Over the next few days, take your weather vane outside at least once a day and practice being a scientist using a weather tool to collect data. Pay attention if there is any rain, any clouds, and what direction the wind is blowing. Write down what you notice in your chart. I hope you enjoyed making the weather vane. I know I did. Don't forget to clean up and wash your hands. As a reminder, the handout that accompanies this video can be found on the KCS website under the Student Resources tab. This is Week 5 Activity Packet for 3rd grade. If you need a printed copy of this activity, they are going to be given out at the mill distribution sites on Wednesdays between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. If you take any pictures of you using your weather vane, I would love to see them. You can tweet them at KCS Science. I hope you share your pictures and I hope you had fun. Thank you so much for watching, little scientists. Have a great day. Bye.